This episode is brought to you by Case File Truth and Deception, based on the hit crime podcast Case File and Goliath. Wealthy businessman Casey Parker has been murdered, and it's up to you to solve the case. Trade evidence with other detectives and get to the bottom of the crime. Who's on your side? Who can't be trusted? Will you be the first to crack the case? Find out in Case File Truth and Deception Game. Available online and in stores at Amazon and Walmart. Hey, y'all. This is April. Hey, guys. It's Caroline. We are back. We're here. It's Thursday. We're thirsty. And we are drinking. Can I tell them about our signature drink for tonight? Oh, yeah. It's really not signature. It's really not very, you know. Oh, and this is Bloody Happy Hour. This is Bloody Happy Hour. Mm -hmm. Um, Glad you've tuned in. So we are drinking. You should tell us what you're drinking on. But we are drinking tonight something different. It's always vodka. Always. However, tonight. I know this is so this is a week late, but I just keep getting tweets about the remains. I'm going to have to turn my phone off. Over yeah, here. she's real distracted because she's real pissed that that is supposedly Brian Laundry's body. Remains. It Remain. is. It was told to police. It was told to the parents. It has police. been it has confirmed. It has been confirmed that the, the police have informed Brian Laundry's parents that the remains found at the park are Brian's, which I... Based on what we think and what I just changed my mind to thinking <laughs> is that it was his parents. They did it. They killed him on before, the camping trip. They before the police even knew he was missing because they killed him on the camping trip and they put him out there and then they just let him right to the remains. Did that is exactly was, what happened. Yeah. Okay. So maybe by this time next week they would have. This will be what we find out happened. Yeah. But I think that's right. Uh, I've been saying that. I know. I know. I was not listening to it. <laughs> wasn't hearing it. I've been saying that. Dad, I think it was really daddy. And I think mama's just kind of gone along with it like she's the victim. And wasn't she the one that called the police and said, let's go look here? Uh, just. Yeah. Just this week. I, it just said parents. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, back to. Your drink. Tell us about your drink. Okay, so I'm drinking Crown Royal Black and some Sprite in honor of a good friend who lost her husband this week. And at the funeral and at the viewing, they had his crown out. They talked about how he loved his, that was his nightcap. So I was like, I am going to That's so drink great. that for him. And so are you, except for you got Diet Coke. I mean, it's better than Sprite, I think, with whiskey. It's I dark. I don't think you can mix the dark with the light. I mean, you can, I mean, actually. I mean, we do that all the I time. I mean, let me go back. <laughs> I am basically I, mixed with the you, dark and a light. That's, that's your exactly <laughs> right. <laughs> I just don't like brown, like, soda. Oh. Uh-huh, you looked at me funny. I did. So we got to get straight to the story. Yeah, here is officially your first story with no... Banter, yep. since you hate it. So we have our fourth um, abductor, kidnapper, torturer, torturer David Parker Ray. This We're is jumping in. In the month. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. Halloween, too. Yes. He's Halloween pretty scary. Halloween is coming, and I don't have a costume, so. Oh, well. I don't care. He was born November 6, 1939, in New Mexico. <gasps> His birthday's coming up, too. Well, you should celebrate. No. Okay. okay. Um, his dad was an abusive drunk, and uh, who he treated his wife, which he treated his wife, David, and David's sister, Peggy, like all the same way, like horribly. He was controlling. He was just an awful, awful person. Okay. The dad. David's daddy. David's daddy. Mm -hmm. His parents got divorced when David was about 10. And then the David, the mom, and the sister all moved to live with the grandfather. Well, the mom didn't stay there very long because she was just like, mm, I'm not about this. I need to go do my drugs, and I don't care about my kids. She left him. She left him, too. <gasps> 
So they're stuck living with the grandparent and the grandfather. And this grandfather is not nice either. So he's just like his daddy. He was super strict. He had all these rules. He expected everyone to follow. And if they did it, they were beat. Okay. Yeah. They were abused. And about once a month, David's David's old daddy, old David's daddy would come and he would just show up. He'd give a little visit to David. Did he bring presents? He did bring presents. He would come once a month. Do you want to know? Do you want to guess what he would bring? Um, Spider-Man. No. Action figures. No. Porn magazines. Yes. <laughs> really? Yes. So he's like Joseph Fritzl. Yes. Did he put them under the pillow? Guess what kind of porn magazines? I don't actually have. B- is it BDSM? Um, yes. Specifically oh. S&M? Is that the same thing as BDSM? S&M Sado. is sadomasochism? Masochistic? So I think it's like <gasps> BDSM is like classy and S&M <laughs> is like trashy okay. or like horrible. Classy? Whatever Fuji. kind of porn magazines they these were they were way worse okay i don't actually never seen a porn magazine yeah do they still do them i don't know save paper these days i just go to the porn hub so uh anyway moving along he he would get all these bdsm magazines once a month so he just was loving it and like i said the mom was gone she had no contact with david or the sister and so David starts going to school, but he gets, he's getting beat at home by his grandpa or his grand, grandparents. And then he's going to school and kids are bullying him. He's like super awkward around the girls. And so they're like, he, he can't, he has no safe place. Okay. He goes home, he gets beat. He goes to school. He gets, you know, beat too, I guess. They started beating him up on the, on the playground. They were making fun of him because he was shy around the girls and he was just a target. So he couldn't escape it. Um, and then he eventually starts like, mm, I think maybe I'll start doing drugs and start drinking. I mean, you start experimenting with drugs and alcohol whenever you get into situations where your life is terrible. Yeah. Yeah. How old was he? He was. High school age? Uh, yeah. Yeah. In his teen years. Okay. He started experimenting with this and then he started, you know, putting those porn magazines to use and he started having some fantasies. Of, you know, raping, torturing, and even murdering. Because I guess this crazy stuff is in these magazines. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So he is doing all of this, and he eventually graduates from high school. He joins the Army. He starts being a mechanic, and he does that for a little bit, gets honorable mention. or They always join the Army. I Listen. Always. <laughs> I know. He continued to work as a mechanic throughout his adult life. And, I mean, he could weld. He could make his own tools. He could pretty much fix anything. And he could teach other people how to fix things. Good with his hands. He was good. He Everybody was like, he's just very helpful. He seems nice. You know, I always feel like on these things when people describe people, they're always like, he was super friendly and super nice and super this and super this. And I'm like, bitch, but tell, tell what's really, tell him really. Surely he was not that nice and friendly. They're good at faking and putting on personas. Nobody ever did They're that. They're good at blending in. I don't know. Anyway, so he gets out of the army and he, um, well, he actually ends up getting married and divorced four times. Okay. <laughs> Over the years. He has two kids with throughout these four marriages and one of his daughters um is named glinda jean ray but she goes by jesse ray jesse ray jesse ray <clears throat> okay so we have that so he's finally on his like fourth marriage right this fourth marriage is where he finds the love of his life so he eventually gets divorced from her. But on his fourth marriage, when he starts it, he finds the love of his life, which is Cindy Handy. So um, Cindy Handy also had a horrible childhood. Okay. Uh huh. She was molested by her stepdad when she was 11. Um, and she... Wait, who's Cindy Handy again? Cindy Handy is his fourth wife. Oh, wife. Okay. His fourth wife. 
Jesse Ray's the daughter. The daughter. Okay. Just a quick introduction of these people. As I'm okay. Right to it. Okay. So Cindy Hindy is the fourth wife. She her like she grew up. She had a horrible childhood. She was molested by her stepdad because apparently her stepdad said that he got into the wrong bed. Oh. Okay. <laughs> And I guess he had sex with the wrong woman. The wrong, I mean, I apparently, mean, a twelve-year-old versus however thirty-year-old. I mean, it's yeah, very, you know, mean, very similar. Yeah, so, I can see how that. Yeah, could not easy, ever easy mistake. Easy mistake. So he's like, uh, he goes and he tells, or she ends up going and telling her mom. She's like, "Mom, mom, you like so and so." was molesting me or whatever. And the mom is like, goes and asks the stepdad and she believes that he accidentally got on the wrong bed. And oh, so God. she kicks the kid out. She kicks out Cindy Hindy to <laughs> Cindy, the street. Cindy Hindy gone. She kicked out to the street. Oh God. Yep. So she didn't believe it. So then she went on. Is and her she, mama's name? Um, Clara Barbara Barbara? Knight? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be another rhyming name. <laughs> so she gets kicked out and, uh, you know, you get kicked out of the house at 11? 11 or 12? 11 or 12. And she's just like, you know what? I think I'm going to start selling drugs. I'm going to start doing coke. I'm going to be a coke dealer. And she just went all in. <laughs> I mean, at least she had a business plan. <laughs> she had a business plan. <laughs> but you can't, like, sell drugs and do them because you're not very successful. Well, that's why she was a failed coke dealer. Oh. <laughs> she didn't succeed at it. And she was apparently also a violent sociopath. So, I mean, she had a lot going for her. Um, and this was around the time when she met David Parker Ray. I mean. Yeah. I don't know status. how old she is. Like, we don't need to know Would that. we call I this just... a power couple? Oh, for sure. Oh, for okay. sure. Yeah. They're probably the most horrible human beings and disgusting people you have probably ever will hear about. Okay. Yeah. They're real bad. Um, and so she was like, she had like... She, was on some kind of like workers release program or something. And so this is how she, I guess she's doing like community service yeah. and she ends up wor running into David Parker. Ray. He works for p the parks, like park system. And he's the mechanic for the national park. Did you tell me what state this is in? New Mexico. Oh, okay. Okay. And now I tell you the places where we are. This is great. Okay. So they met at the, you know, they, so Cindy Handy. She meets David Parker Ray, and they meet at Elephant Butte. Butte. B-U-T-T-E. Uh -huh. It's not booty or butt. It's Butte. Okay. Right? Yeah. Okay. So they meet at Elephant Butte. They're, we're fast, fast forwarding to his 50s. So living in New Mexico, they're in Elephant Butte, and this town is adjacent to a small town called Truth or Consequences. Okay. Truth or consequences. A town is the called truth or consequences? Truth <laughs> or consequences. Okay? Okay. I just wanted to soak that in, okay? Take a minute. Appreciate these town names. Okay. All right. I was hung up on this for about two hours. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm trying to just me, let it no, slide by. It's going gonna, it's gonna to hit you in a couple minutes, but I'm going to tell you about this, this town name because it was a, I mean, that's not a normal. No. No. So originally, this town was named Hot Springs. Okay, the city changed its name to Truth or Con Consequences as a result of a radio show contest. So in the 1950s, Ralph Edwards is a host of a popular NBC radio show called Truth or Consequences. Okay. And he announced that he would air the program from the first town that renamed itself after the show. <laughs> we should do that with Bloody Happy Hour. So we have Truth or Consequences. Now, Elephant Butte and Truth or Consequences are right next to each other. So Elephant Butte is actually a man-made reservoir. Okay. Okay. I wasn't sure what a reservoir was, so <laughs> if there's... <laughs> Were you? <laughs> do you it's know just what's... like... But... They are school hey, has reservoir. failed us because I reservoir? thought Vienna was in Mexico. <laughs> sausage? <laughs> Vienna sausage. From the last one, when they ran no. off to, to Vienna, I thought it, no, Vienna you, was in Mexico. Yeah, you thought the guy was from Australia. I know. 
So I'm saying, like, we there's we this has no nothing to do with the place. This is a reservoir. I know what that is. There water Did you there. Get you a line? Is it a dam? You're close. There is water, but it is like a man-made body of water. So they made a lake. Oh, okay. Isn't that cool? So it's just like any other man-made reservoir or body of water. Um, it it's just it's in the desert. So everyone is like, oh my gosh, this is great. Like we got a lake in the desert. And so it's turns out to be this place, great place for like retired people to come. They take their boats and they fish. I mean, it sounds so nice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no. Yeah. Actually, it brought a bunch of drifters, which I didn't know what the <laughs> really drifters were. <laughs> I mean, I assumed it was just like people drifting through life. Yeah. What's a drifter? Like they just have no place. <laughs> they just move like nomad. Are they homeless? Yeah. They're homeless. Yeah. 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 So it's like basically a bunch of sex workers, homeless people, and drug addicts. Yeah. So now they're Skid Row living off. They are straight up. And they are just popping up all around. They're setting up pop tents. They're setting up trailers. They're setting up tiny houses. They are just setting up everywhere around this town. Okay. Elephant Butte, sure the consequences. Whew. It's getting serious. So around this time, 1999... The city of truth, their consequences, and Elephant Butte had the second highest crime rate in America. So it's right up there with us, Get Row. <laughs> truth or consequences. Truth or consequences. So they don't even give a shit about the consequences. No, they don't care about <laughs> any consequences. They are just, yeah, they don't care. I don't have a pun. There's a ton of rapes, a ton of murders, a ton of assaults. And it was mainly the sex workers and the drug addicts who fell victims to all of these crimes. Because, you know, sadly, law enforcement kind of brushes under the rug mm -hmm. if it's like a sex worker or a drug addict person who is involved in these crimes. Because, I mean, we just really know there's they have no sense of urgency in these. I won't say they have no. They typically, it just seems that they typically do not. Yeah. Or they're like very put out by it or they're like, eh, like. Yeah, I people mean, it's, are like, it's when you sad... choose to live that life, you... Yes, exactly. So it's a sad situation. Um, let me just tell you that this story is going to get very uh, disturbing. Yes. Okay? So if you're listening, I just have to tell you, you know, don't put your kids up. Put or your children up. Listen. I don't know if you need to let her listen to this. I'll let okay, April don't. tell you at the end of the episode if you Probably need to let not. your kid. There's got to be at least an age Especially limit. Especially if your kid has three first names like David Parker Ray. Exactly. Do not let him listen. So okay. it gets pretty uh, de descriptive. Especially when I play the recording. Okay. This is your warning. This is your warning. So anyway, back to David. He's out here. He's in this area. He's in truth or consequences. Over the years, he has saved a lot of money. And he's working as a mechanic. And he's, and like I said, he's working. So Elephant Butte is, is the state park. So that's where he's working. He, uh, you know, and then he ends up meeting, you know, Cindy Hindi, which apparently is the love of his life. It's his fourth wife. And they're together. I guess they didn't get divorced. Maybe they did. Probably whenever they went to jail. Spoiler. So she was... Um, Oh, I already told you. She had a terrible childhood. Um, so they're living together in this double-wide mobile home. And uh, this area is basically, it's so spread out. And you can, uh, I mean, miles and miles of abandoned land and just yeah. open space. Yeah, and like, like there's, New Mexico is. Yeah, just caves open. and I mean, there's just, it's just very isolated. So you can be as isolated as you want. So David decides that it's finally time for him to fulfill his lifelong dream. Okay. Any guesses? Any he guesses? wants to open his own mechanic shop. I mean, actually, that's a pretty good guess. Okay. Yeah. Um, you know, he had the finances. He had the woman, a woman by his side. So he was ready to go. Cindy Hindi supported him. She was like, I think that's great. And I would love to help you build your toy box. Do you ever know, like, when the you like watch a movie or like 
Wait, where did Toy Box come in? I'm play? about to tell you. Oh. She just said that was his that was the his lifelong goal was it's to, to build a toy box. It's to build a toy box. Oh. Help him build his toy okay. box. Okay, okay. And I was gonna say, you ever see the title of a movie or a show and you're like, what does that have to do with the story? Like what does the toy box have to do with the movie? Well, I'm about to tell you. Okay. So between the two of them, Cindy Handy and David Parker Ray, they spent over $100,000 on an empty soundproof trailer as well as the supplies that were in it. So the trailer was put on his property and they stocked it with tons of supplies, including, but not limited to, saws, ropes, knives, needles, surgical tools, more needles, whips, chains, straps, electric Cushion clamps, oh my a fur-lined coffin, and a plethora of sex toys. Get ready. It gets better. David had decorated the walls with explicit pornographic images of women being tied up, gagged, strangled. And he had actually just basically torn them out of porn magazines and taped them all over the wall. So he had like this porn magazine wallpaper. Oh. <laughs> How lovely. Oh I mean, goodness. he's fancy. He's living. And he's bougie. So... With him being a mechanic, he would build and make his own tools. And he was like, uh, I'm going to take up a new hobby and I'm going to build my own sex toys. Oh. Uh, so he's got The ones some... that are already made aren't good enough for him. No, because let me tell you, he sure did get creative. Now, everybody, I've already given you a warning. So one of the toys he made was a dildo out of plastic pvc pipe now this wasn't just like your old skinny pipe this was a think of the size of a how about this coke bottle right here okay it was maybe even bigger it was this size but that wasn't only it this had nails sticking out of it Uh, out poking outward the pvc pipe dildo had like nails at the po- base of the wiener shaft <laughs> <laughs> it, y'all should see how she's demoing this it ha- i should have brought a real one it had <laughs> and then it had nails that would stick up Mm-mm. towards the mushroom thing i'm glad i chose whiskey for this i'm one. telling you i've oh, how many times i have to warn y'all so these nails are there Obviously, for pain and not for pleasure, because it is supposed to rip and cut the skin. Mm. Okay. So, there you have it. I hope you got a great visual from that, because guess what? I had to, too. So, we're in it together. Obviously, um, you know, he made a couple of other different penetration machines. Okay. (laughs) And he made one machine where the wiener, or what do we want to call it? Penis. Dangly, like appendage, whatever you want, would jab. They can't see. Aggr- they can't see. It would jab aggressively, which I don't know if that's like a typical gadget that people like to use an aggressively jab penis poking machine. But I don't feel like I don't know if that would spice it up. But in this case, it was made to do damage. Okay. Okay. Um. Once again, not for pleasure. Oh, he also had ankle spreaders. I don't know what those are, but I'm assuming it just says spread your ankle. They're not normal. It probably keeps you from closing your legs. Like you put you put your ankles in there and you can't move them. So yeah. you can't like yeah. Yeah. reject. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> yep. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah. Oh, 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 oh. No, I do. I have a note. These ankle spreaders would... Keep your legs open so that your hips would pop out of place and your muscles would tear. I know. But the centerpiece of his toy box was a gynecologist chair. Oh, how do you get that? Amazon? Uh, Can you order those off Amazon? ordered it on Amazon. And with this, this gynecologist chair came with stirrups and everything. Mm Mm-mm. Um, he also had a homemade electrical generator made for torture, a mirror 
was put on the ceiling above the gynecologist chair, just, you know, so the victim could enjoy whatever they were watching, which was themselves getting tortured. Mm -mm. He made a wooden contraption that would bend his victims over, immobilize them while he had dogs or friends come over and stick it in them. He's sick bastard. He's sick. Oh, he had friends come join? The conspiracy theories about this are that so many people ever, like knew about it oh, and were in on it and all wow. kinds of stuff. So, and dogs. Six, what? He would put gravy into the lower area of whoever was in the contraption and let the dogs go at it. To- oh God! No, I oh, know. David did not want any consenting adults. He wanted to kidnap people. He wanted to create pain for his victims. And as I mentioned, he would also want to disgusting add animals. Poor animals. The poor animals. I'm sorry. Never mind the person. They the probably have diseases anyway. So I'm not saying that you deserve any of that. I'm just saying ain't nobody need any of that. So <laughs> here Rewind, we go. Edit go. <laughs> well, y'all know what I'm saying. But the poor animals, okay? So they get gravy. She talking about <laughs> <laughs> they get dinner. They're good. Oh, but yeah, you're right. So March twenty second, nineteen ninety nine, in Elephant Butte, Elephant Booty, Elephant Butt, David pose poses as an undercover police officer. He approaches a sex worker named Cynthia. Okay, Cynthia. Got it? Got it. So Cynthia's in a parking lot, and she, he comes up to her, and she's like, offers like him a blowjob or something. I don't know. And she's like. She offers the police she off- officer the okay. blowjob? Listen. David posed as an undercover police oh, officer. Oh, undercover. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, she's real bold. So she, he approaches her, and she's like, hey, you want a blowjob? Or, you know, like, I guess that's what they say. So. He immediately puts handcuffs on her and arrests her and says that he's a police, shows the badge Uh and says he's a police officer and puts her into, handcuffs her and puts her in the car and brings him back to his house. Okay. Okay. So he brought her to his house. He chains her to a bed in the living room. Okay. Because they're in the house part. He puts a collar like around her neck. This collar has like all these like spikes on it or whatever is dog collar. It's locked around her neck. And she ended up being held captive for three days. She knew she had to escape. She's like, I know I have to escape or I'm about to die. I know I got to do it. I got to do it. And I got to do it. So David goes to work one day and Cindy Hindi. Cindy Hindi is in charge of her. Okay. She is the one she's supposed to supervise. Okay. But Cindy Hindi, you know, she's real important. She had to have a phone call. She had talked to her friend. She's like, hey, bitch. <laughs> hey, girl. Uh, what's going on? Let's do coke. I don't know. So she, like, gets distracted. Cindy Handy, she's on the phone. She goes into the other room, and she's just talking to her friend. All at the same time, Cynthia is chained, and she's stuck to the bed. Well, she notices that the keys to the chains on her wrists are, like, right next to, on the table, right next to the bed. Okay, Cynthia. Yeah. So, Cynthia, she scoots. She just kind of, like, scoot, scoots to, to try to get the keys. She tries to get the keys. So, she's, like, her adrenaline's rushing. She's freaking out. She's, like, oh, my gosh, I got to unlock. I got to unlock. I got to unlock. And C- Cindy Handy hears some, like, rustling. And she goes back into the other room because, you know, she's on the phone. She's, like, bitch, I got to go. I got to go. Something happening out there. So she goes and she notices that Cynthia is trying to unlock herself and get free. So Cindy Hindi is like, no, she grabs, uh, she like jumps on her. She tries to like fight her and like stop her from escaping. She grabs a lamp, busts it over Cynthia's uh-huh. head. But Cynthia, she's about that life. She is not. Yeah. She's like, you, it doesn't matter. I'm not stopping. She, I mean, because, you know, Cindy Hindi trying to knock her unconscious. She somehow managed to get her hands free from the chains. And she noticed, I don't know why, I don't know why there would be an ice pick nearby. I mean, there's all kinds of other shit around this house. So Mm -hmm. there's just an ice pick right there. She grabs the ice pick and she gets Cindy Hindi and just stabs her right in the neck. Yes. And then she just runs out the door. She's butt naked. She got this dog collar on and she's just like going 
she gone. She ends up at Ariel Castro's house. She probably does. She's gone. She's naked. She's running. She, the cars are passing her. She's trying to flag them down. She's like, hell. <laughs> and they're like, no, hell no. They go right past her, which I don't blame them. I would oh, drive straight goodness. past her too. I'm sorry. I can't. I mean, they look at her and they're like, oh, hell no. <laughs> no. Did you interview them? <laughs> yes, I did. I interviewed them. That's exactly what they said. So she keeps running. She's going to different homes. She's knocking on doors and people are not answering. Nobody's answering. So she finally gets to a house where the lady answers the door, takes her in, brings her in, calls the police, and they eventually get her to the hospital. Oh, good. I just knew David Parker was going to be driving down the road. No, he's ready for his next one. What are we talking about? So they take her to the hospital. They treat her for her injuries, and they start questioning her about what happened. So she starts telling them everything, and guess what? They, they don't do believe, not her. believe her. They do not believe her. They do not believe her. She's telling them all. All I mean, they don't find her credible because obviously she's she a does. She's a prostitute, and they just dismiss her whole story because they know who. Like I guess they probably know who she is. Yeah, the streets. So she continues to tell the story, and then she notices some lady walking in the hospital. And guess who walks in the hospital? Don't say Cindy Hendy. Cindy Hendy up, and she walked in the hospital. Walked to oh, because she's hurt. Yes, because she got. I, <laughs> I don't was know like, how is she, she a nurse. No, she walked in, or or she was brought in, or whatever, uh-huh. because of her injury of the neck. <laughs> so then Cynthia's freaking out. She's like, "That's her. That's her." <sighs> yes. <laughs> Hi, I'm Hank. You might remember me from a show called King of the Hill. Check out Ma, a King of the Hill rewatch podcast. These boys ain't right, but they are funny. Find the Ma podcast anywhere you get your podcasts or at roguemedianetwork.com. I tell you what. <laughs> and so, they're still like, nah. No, they finally, they finally believe her. Okay. So now police go and they start questioning Cindy, Cindy Handy. Handy. Yeah. So they g- end up going to, the questioner, they end up going to the home. And they search it and they see this place is a complete mess. There's chains around the bed. There's a waste bucket where they had to like... Mm made Cynthia like pee and stuff and go to the bathroom. They noticed signs of a struggle. They noticed a broken lamp and they're like, okay, she's not lying. That's so nice of them. And Cindy Hendy and David are taken into custody. Okay. Police continue. Podcast to- over. Podcast Yay, over. So, so yeah, good. wasn't that good? Oh, yeah. So they start searching the home and then they head to the trailer and they see a variety of signs hanging in this Toy box. The trailer is a toy box. Okay. But they live in a trailer. So they two live trailers. in a home that's a double wide. Is that a trailer? Yeah. Oh. And then they have their extra, oh, like, think of a big 18 wheeler truck. Oh, and yeah, the, yeah, yeah. That back part is called uh-huh. the trailer. The right? trailer. Okay. So that's what, or a container or yeah, whatever. It yeah. looks like it's just a container. Okay. That's what the pictures look like. So that's the toy box container. So they do search the house, and then they are about to go and search the the toy box. They see all these signs hanging in this toy box. That it uh, one of the signs reads Satan's Den, and another one reads the Lore of Satanism. And I know the police then realizes David's motive in all of this is Satanism. Oh, mm. okay, I know. So the next to the Satan's Den sign, they see a tripod with a big fancy old RCA camcorder. Gotta love RCA. Is that that's the ones where you actually put the big VHS tape inside in there. thing? It's crazy. Yeah. So they see this camcorder and it's facing the gynecologist's chair. They then find a clipboard. What they call a roll call list of victims that he had. It just basically lists the victims that he had from 1993 to 1997. And this clipboard has a list of dates. Like, so, for example, it would say, like, abducted date. And it would say February 7th, 1994, 27. April 16th, 
1994, 33, and the list goes on and on, and it's tons and tons of dates, and the numbers just continue to grow throughout 1997. So he would mark a tally mark for, he would like tally, I guess, right by the date for each time an assault was committed by Uh, him. He just messed his own self up. Yeah, you don't even know. (laughs) They found then a bulletin board also had photos that had tons of Polaroids of his victims all all over. It it showed people that were tied up, that were gagged, that were hogtied. And it was like, there was also this big note on the bulletin board that had guidelines. And it was like guidelines for, I guess, if somebody else was coming in. I don't know. There, it just was guidelines. You always get guidelines, rules, Listen, lists. I know. <laughs> Hitchhikers, people who get trapped in a box. and <laughs> So the guidelines said, quote, a woman will do anything to get loose. They will kick. They will scream. They will bite. Offer money. Beg. Scratch. Offer sex. Lie. Run. Threaten. Wait for opportunity. Standard excuses are sob stories. Or these are sob stories. Menstruating. Pregnant. <laughs> I wonder if anybody's ever said, I got AIDS. You don't want to write me. I got AIDS. <laughs> That's true. I always thought about that. Then, I'm HIV positive. Another quote says, don't let her get to you. If she's worth taking, she's worth keeping. And she must be subjected to hypnosis before the woman can be safely released. Never trust a chain captive. End quote. Oh, my God. She like that? End quote. So. I'm getting ready for this. Then police started reviewing these tapes that were in this fancy RCA video player. (laughs) They were like, oh, okay. Oh, here we go. We see, they saw a lady tied up to a chair. The gyno chair. The gyno chair. chair. She's naked. It's clear that she was drugged. She's barely conscious. And she's clearly unable to give any type of consent. As they watch this tape recording, David's voice starts playing. And you see him hit the play button on like a tape recorder. Tape deck? Is that what it's called? A tape player Uh thingy, majigger. So you see... uh, So David, he would play this audio recording of his voice for the victims before he like assaulted and tortured them. And he would explain what he's going to do, and he would tell them what they're about to go through. Oh, my God. Okay. And so every time that he would bring a new victim in, he would tie them to this chair. He'd play the tape, and it would be like major, like Saw Saw vibes. You know, the movie Saw? Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's, That's what it was for... So he would describe, like... That that these acts were, what did he say? He would just describe these acts not only for him, but they were also for the, quote, congregation of the Church of Satan. Oh, God. He was psycho. Yes. And just uh, because, okay, just because we, you and I know how much everybody loves listening to 911 tapes or recordings of tapes. Um, I'm going to play you a two minute clip of one of his re- of his recordings. I mean, some this tape that he would play for these people were like 50 minutes long. Oh, I mean, it's like a 45, Just 50 minute torture. tape. Torture. He basically was saying that he was this was what he was using to like hypnotize them. I know Mm-mm. he ain't doing it. No. He just want he was it was tor- another form of torture. <clears throat> so, let me just tell you that I wonder how many times he had to switch out the damn he had a si- he had a he had a side B. This is the tape replayer. This is different than the re- video camera. I know, but he's recording them as Oh, oh, for but you know those tapes last long. Gosh. Okay, so listen. This Recording that I'm going to play is absolutely disgusting. It is very descriptive and it's vulgar. So if you're not interested in it, you need to skip ahead two minutes. I'm just warning you, skip ahead. Okay? I'm going to play it in the next five seconds. 
if you are all want to hear it because you're so curious like me, then <laughs> stay. And here we go. Ready? Go. Hello there, bitch. Are you comfortable right now? I doubt it. Wrists and ankles chained, gagged, probably blindfolded. You are disoriented and scared too, I would imagine. Perfectly normal under the circumstances. For a little while, at least, you need to get your shit together and listen to this tape. It is very relevant to your situation. I'm going to tell you in detail why you have been kidnapped, what's going to happen to you, and how long you'll be here. I don't know the details of your capture because this tape is being created July 23rd, 1993, is a general advisory tape for future female captives. Oh the information God. I'm going to give you is based on my experience dealing with captives over a period of several years. If, at a future date, there are any major changes in our procedures, the tape will be upgraded. Now, you are obviously here against your will. Totally helpless. Don't know where you're at. Don't know what's going to happen to you. You're very scared or very pissed off. I'm sure that you've already tried to get your wrists and ankles loose. No, you can't. Now you're just waiting to see what's going to happen next. You probably think you're going to be raped, and you're fucking sure right about that. Our primary interest is in what you've got between your legs. You'll be raped thoroughly and repeatedly in every hole you've got. Because, basically, you've been snatched and brought here for us to train and use as a sex slave. Sound kind of far out? Well, uh, I suppose it is to the uninitiated, but we do it all the time. Wow, this is basically like their orientation. And it is... 45 minutes long. An orientation. He repeats and he rambles the same nasty-ish over and over and over sexual nonsense and he just needs to go get a damn puzzle or something. Yeah. Because he's real bored and he's not very good at hip hypnotic. No. What? Hyp hypnosis. Oh my gosh, yes, hypnosis. <laughs> I mean... And when you finally think this tape is over, it's like, mm, nope, Keeps side going. B, side B, flip it over. Oh, do you hear I'm flipping it over? <laughs> you probably do. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I mean, I did not feel like I was hypnotized when I was listening to it, so I was actually kind of mad. But, no, nasty garbage. She's nasty garbage. And um, you know what? If you want to hear the whole recording, you can just go right over to YouTube and listen to it all because oh it's God. there. So, anyways... Back to it. Police, like I said, they were looking through all the footage. Okay. They're going through all the footage. They're trying to figure out who this lady is who is in this video who is tied up in this chair. So they want to find her. They want to question her. They want to figure out what's going on. They notice that she has this tattoo on her like ankle calf area. And they know they're like, it's very unique tattoo. And they just, they needed to figure out how to get it out to everybody. So they needed help really identifying her because it was like really grainy footage. But they ended up sending it over to the FBI. And then somehow the FBI determines like what kind of tattoo it is. And they get like this picture out to everybody. I don't know how they get it out there, but they get it out there. And they, uh, the lady who it, I guess they're urging whoever, they're like, come forward, come forward. You would really help out in this finding out why who, do they think she's not dead i don't know hmm. but guess what she's not okay i i think because they just no i don't know i don't know i mm. well anyways she ends up uh she's in colorado and her name's kelly so she comes forward and she is like oh that's my tattoo uh, and that was me uh, period so, yeah the end She's like, okay, bye. So Kelly goes to Truth or Consequences Police Department. <laughs> I can't. I can't with Truth. I told. I can't with Truth uh -uh. or Consequences. 
I would hate it if I lived there. So <laughs> now I tell you Kelly's story. Okay. Okay. So you got to listen. Kelly testified July 24th, 1996. So this is like her testifying okay. story. So she said that she and her husband at the time were living in Elephant Butte. So she got a, she and her husband got into an argument. She leaves her house and she goes and meets up with some friends. They go have a have a beverage and play some pool, whatever, having a drink. They end up going to this local bar called the Blue Water Salon. Saloon. Saloon. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it was saloon. I don't know. Or she got her hair done. <laughs> she also got her hair done <laughs> by Jessa Ray. <laughs> So at this bar, she actually does run into Jesse. Jesse Ray. Uh, pop quiz. Who's Jesse? Daughter. Yep. David's daughter, Jesse Ray. And yes, Kelly actually knew her. Like they kind of knew each other for a couple of years. I mean, I wouldn't say they're like great friends, but they they knew each other. So towards the end of the night, Kelly's like, she's not feeling really good. She's feeling like dizzy and she's feeling like sick. And she's only had one beer. So she's like, oh, my gosh, I need a ride home. I need a ride home. So the next thing she knows, Jessie's, like, taking her a ride home, but she's kind of, like, blacking out and stuff. And the next thing she's, like, just wakes. I don't. Okay. What? Jessie drugged her? Yes. Jesse, Jesse Ray's... works at the saloon. No. Jesse Ray is just there. Hanging out. Hanging out. And they had been friends, but Jesse Ray is part of everything. How did he convince his girl, wife and his daughter? Listen, they're all a bunch of drug addicts out there. I'm telling you, it's all conspiracy. Wow. So, but the thing is that Kelly didn't remember anything. Nothing. She did not remember a thing. Later... Okay, this gets confusing. I'm going to try to just read what I have so I make it clear. It is reported what exactly happened, and it's this. Jesse Ray drugged the beer that Kelly was drinking. She drove Kelly to David's toy box where she then was put a dog collar was put on her. She was locked in the toy box. She would wake up and be drugged, wake up, be drugged over and over for two days. David then... I read two different things. One of them said that he like slit her throat and thought she was dead and then left her. Mm. Other one said that he just thought she was dead and just dropped her off on the side of the road. Either way, she was dropped off on the side of the road. A random stranger guy finds her, picks her up, takes her home. And she starts telling her husband, she's like, and she's been gone for oh, two. Oh, takes her to her, uh, her own house. Takes her to her house. own, oh. yeah, takes her back to her house. I was like, hello, Where her hero. husband is, but everyone in this town is either, I'm just, that's just, it's a bunch of drifters. They're just on skid row. Yes. So the husband, so she's like, I don't know. I don't remember what happened. I don't remember what happened. I got injuries. And he's like, bitch, it's been two days. I don't believe you. And he thinks that she's been cheating on him uh, and he thinks that or she was on a drug bender. And so he's like, mm, no, files for divorce. Mo she moves to Colorado and this all happened within a week. Oh, my God. And she's like, maybe I did. I don't know what happened. She has no idea. Oh, my God. And then she saw the tattoo. So she was like, mm, that's my tattoo. Can you imagine? So, so then, now she gets so to see the then, video of what happened yes, to her. Yes, so then there's a, also there's an interview with Kelly, and she says how she would always have these nightmares about her being held down and restrained and raped and things being inserted into her, and she attributed these dreams to stress. I don't know what kind of stress you have, uh -uh. but girl, if you're having dreams like that because of stress, you got some stress. I mean, I've, I'm stressed. I don't have dreams like that. I'm just telling you. But That's the trauma. police, when the police contacted her about the tattoo, they questioned her and asked if she remembered anything about this guy or being at this house. And they brought up the VHS tape from the fancy recorder. And she said she had no idea. And so the police ended up showing her the tape. And then that's when she starts remembering everything. Oh, I mean, goodness. You know, he did hypnotize her. Not really. He drugged her. No, I'm just telling you the brain is crazy. Is, does crazy things. 
it's like it knows that you went through this and it like keeps it out until something like triggers it to come forward. Oh, my goodness. I cannot with brains. <laughs> There's so many wrinkles in them. Ew. Ew. <laughs> Can we add a little comedy to this terrible story? Because I'm trying to. Listen. I'm trying I to. I cannot believe, like, she didn't know what happened. She probably thought, maybe I did do drugs. Maybe I did cheat on them. Like, let me she just go on and sign these divorce papers. Listen, I have taken a sleeping pill once. I mean, I'm prescribed them. Yeah. And there are times. You don't know. I'm like, I didn't. Like, it's like, this is, you know, when people take Ambien. Ambien. And they do, like, Ambien. Amazon orders. I have a friend, I won't say her name, yeah. but she knows if she's listening that she ordered like a ton of like M and M's <laughs> for a a tailgate, and they were like a bunch of green and yellow M and M's for this tailgate. And so she ordered instead of like one package of however many she ordered, like twelve. I mean, she ordered apparently like a shit ton of damn. M&M's and she did not know what to do. Like, she's like, I didn't know how it I was on Ambien. Oh. <laughs> I was like, where's this going? Is oh, M&M's no, no. actually Ambien? No, yeah, there no, was, it really was just. She didn't even, okay, yeah. okay. Yes, so I've heard some stories about Ambien. Yeah, like I, I would think like Amazon, per, well, that I don't know. Or people driving places and not knowing like they're like, oh, I'm going to go get, I'm going to go to Dairy Queen. I'm going to go get a, a Blizzard. And then they don't even know they ate the blizzard. Half the blizzard left on their sweatshirt <laughs> and half of it in that the was bed. You. Oh, <laughs> that was last weekend. I'm so. That was last weekend. <laughs> Whoops. My bad. At least you only ate half of it. I know. The other half was in the bed and then Jack's ate it. So. <laughs> no, but listen, I really do want to go get a blizzard. I'm going to go get one right after this. Okay. If only they would give a sponsor, I would talk more about it. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I will talk about in blizzards from Dairy Queen all the time. Texas stop sign. So the media ends up getting a hold of this story and they start reporting on it. And there's another victim that comes forward. Okay. Angelica is the victim. Now she had previously been to police to report her encounter. Like after she had her encounter, she immediately went to police. But. They didn't believe Which, her. Yeah, and this was actually before the whole Cynthia situation. Cynthia, the one yeah, who... Yeah, the original one. So, that, so she had originally been to them, but they did not take her seriously because guess what? She's a sex worker and a drug addict, and uh, you could probably guess that. So now the media, that the media had gotten a hold of the story, she had gone back to police to follow up with her original claim on this incident just to kind of give them a little bit of information. So, Remember when I came here back then mm -hmm. and... You didn't yeah. believe me? Back then, well, I here. went and told you. Now, now here, I'm here. You here all. we go. What's the song? I don't know. Oh, I know more rap songs. Back in the days no. when I was young, I'm not a kid anymore. No, that's a country song. I'm talking about back then, you didn't want me. Now I'm hot. You oh, all want yeah. me. <laughs> anyway, I'm a rapper on the side. So finally, investigators talk with good old Cindy Hendy. And they told, uh, or she told, oh gosh, she tells officers a lot. This is why she is the uh, a, dis a horrible excuse for a human because she doesn't care about anything. Any of them. Nothing. She doesn't care about, I don't even think she cares about herself. Oh, she told officers that she had participated in several assaults and that she was willing to give up any information on David as long as uh, she would be able to get a lesser sentence. Oh, my God. So talk about some loyalty. Yeah. Mm, girl, you loyal. Bitch ain't loyal. So she told officers that... These hoes ain't loyal. Oh, <laughs> you did. You did. Sure did. So she told officers that David knew... Okay, that David knew he had been tipped off to the FBI because the FBI had come by his house and questioned him on a slavery ring. I'll get to that in more in a second. He reassured Cindy like, no, I've talked my way out of it. Don't worry about it. And then she confirmed, now mind you, she's telling all this to the cops so she can get this lesser sentence. Okay. So she confirmed that David was selling women to sex traffickers, that he viewed women in a sense that he owned them, 
that when talking about like he talked when talking about killing the victims, he like called them packages or something. I don't know, like packages. So he went on to say he, like she was saying he was super crafty. He was constantly making his own torture devices um. <laughs> from like scraps and all kinds of junk that he got from work. She was bragging on his. Yes, skills. she basically was. Yes. And she was saying Dave would take photos of his victims during torture, but he would burn the photos after a certain period of time. But not which, the tapes. Which, right, which the investigators were, they were, they were pissed because they're like, damn, I wish we had photos. I mean, I'm like, I feel like you don't why need do you need more? need more evidence? Yeah. You have plenty. You have tally marks of us. I mean, every which is, I think states. that goes along with the, whatever this conspiracy is I'm telling you about later. So based on everything that she said, it would amount to David killing over 30 people. She talked about how he would try to, oh, he would try to dump the bodies in the lake, but that they would come back up. In so, the reservoir. In the reservoir. Okay. In the, in the reservoir. But the bodies would come back up. So he would have to cut open the stomachs mm. so they would submerge. And he would like, so they would submerge easily into the lake and stay down. He would eventually have to improve his uh, process, uh -huh. dumping process, by not only cutting the stomachs, but then filling them with rocks or cement. So that they'll sink. So that they will sink. And he would also tie them up with like chicken wire or hay wire. Oh my gosh. So they would really sink. So that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yay, mm -mm. David Parker Ray. And now she said there's probably seven bodies in the lake. Now, what do you think the police officers are going to do right now? Uh, search the lake. Oh, yeah. No. No, oh, no mm -mm. divers, no, no nothing. No, it, it's too deep. Oh. Yeah, it's too dark. Don't. Yeah, it's too dark. No, no. And you know what? They don't at all, or they don't no. that day mm -mm. at all? No. You know, they could drain the lake. Mm. Too expensive. <laughs> so you know what they did? Nothing. Oh. Yep. No, nothing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, nothing. All right. Truth yep. and consequences. Truth and consequences. PD. They really... Yeah, they're doing it. Dude, we're almost to the end. Finally. Okay. Human garbage bag. Cindy Handy. Okay. Yes. She is charged with conspiracy to commit kidnapping, accessory to kidnapping, accessory to criminal penetration. No. She was, oh, I can't believe this. She was sentenced to 36 years, but only had to serve about half of her sentence, which was 19 years, and then she would be up for parole. She served her two years of parole in prison, and uh, she was released in July 2019. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so, listen, Cindy Handy's plea deal came three months before a new law required violent criminals to serve at least 80% of their sentence. That's why, with good time, she only had to serve about half of her sentence. And now this soulless creature walks among us. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. She probably so changed her name. She, she might have moved to Waco because Waco's the place to live. She might be here. Mm. My goodness. She's probably at the border with all the other people. Mm. Or under the bridge. Under the bridge, under the border. Then we have Jessie Ray. David's daughter, she turned out to be a drug dealer around town. What a shock. She's drugging people. There's also all these other things about this so boyfriend. So she never got in trouble? Jessie? Oh, yes. Oh, okay. Yes. She also had this boyfriend who I just didn't go into that much detail because I didn't want to have this be a two-hour long thing. Yeah. So she has this boyfriend named like Roy Nancy or Roy Clancy or something fancy. Fancy Nancy. <laughs> Fancy Nancy. So she has this boyfriend and he is like kind of a part of this when he just like ends up helping. I, I don't know. The whole point is we think that there's a lot more people involved that are like really not well, than than David Parker Ray. Wow. So, so she, uh, Jesse Ray claimed to know nothing about what was going on in the toy box or what was happening with the women, but she assumed that they were being raped. She did not participate in the rape. 
But later on, she said that the one she said that she was the one who called the FBI, giving that anonymous tip to them about how David was capturing the women and selling them into a slavery ring. So they think Jesse called FBI. Yes. Oh. She ended up being charged with kidnapping, criminal sexual penetration, criminal sexual contact, and conspiracy. She was released after serving a whopping two and a half years and put on probation for one year. So there are actually no consequences in this town. Nope. Truth or consequences? You ain't getting no consequences. So let's get to the good stuff. Let's get to David. He was questioned and he was living in denial. Oh, of Not course. Not the river. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Or as Bailey Syrian would say, nay, nay. Nay, nay. Nay, nay. Not in denial. In denial. He is denied, denied, denied. He's denying everything. 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 He said it was consensual. He said they were prostitutes. There was no raping. There was no killing. And there was no proof. Except because it was all consensual. They signed a waiver, basically. Pretty much. He showed no remorse. He said he was the victim. Oh. How dare they make these accusations, is what he said. So they ended up having no bodies. There's no bodies. Bodies uh-huh. for the trial. They didn't want to search the river because they did not want to search the river. I mean, with their consequences, <laughs> what you gonna do? But you, uh, they, Yusuf, Yusuf, but Yusuf, mm. she, she doesn't know what she. We're typed. gonna cut. We're gonna cut this out. No, I don't know what I'm <laughs> oh, <clears throat> I was right. Using. Him using the devices, no, and making them. I think what they're saying is making these devices uh-huh. and using them. He was of full mental capacity. Yes. Okay. So okay. it's premeditated. It was proof of premeditation and lack of in, lack of insanity. Yeah. Him making these devices. So he was trying he, to make an insanity plea, or I probably okay. But like they were saying, use of. The devices and being able to make all these things, uh-huh. like he knew what he was doing. Oh, he yeah. wasn't insane. And okay. premeditated. Yes. So he's put through three different trials, one, one for each living victim that they have proof of or whatever. So there's Cynthia, Kelly, and Angelica that he's okay. going to have three trials for. Well, unfortunately, Angelica died of a drug overdose, so she did not get to have a trial for her. I know. She was like 28. Man, I Angelica. know it's real sad. So he agreed to a plea deal oh, to I don't want to hear it. receive this was his deal <laughs> 224 years. Oh, I know. I know. I was, I'm I know, okay. but can you imagine that's your deal? Yeah. Like that's real <laughs> terrible. You're awful. And um, in exchange for Jessa Ray, to receive a reduced sentence, which obviously we know she only received two and a half years. So I guess, I don't know why, how that even, I don't know. I don't oh, know. he was looking out for his daughter. I guess so. So it is believed that he raped, tortured, and killed over 60 women. Wow. However, there is zero, there are zero remains. There is location, zero High body count comes from journals he kept entailing all the things he did to each victim. and But it doesn't say where he buried them. But mm. here we go. After his arrest, he agreed to show authorities where he buried the victims. Okay. But conveniently, in May 2002, David Parker Ray suffered a massive heart attack and oh. died at the age of 62. Bye. Oh my god. And scene. That's it. No That's closure. That's where we end. No closure. Cindy Handy out, Jess Ray out, and his toy box, I'm pretty sure is available to go tour. Is it really? Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Truth and Consequences is trying to make some money. We're about to go to Truth or Consequences. Oh, my goodness. (laughs) April's going to post pictures of Truth or Consequences tomorrow. 
This is why he falls under the radar because he don't have any numbers. Exactly. That's why I'm saying it, this is apparently it's not a well-known or maybe well like talked about or yeah. uh, I, some some would say that only people who are like into 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 true crime know about this guy. I just remember seeing him on all the different shows or listen or I would just see Toy listen. Box, Toy Box, yeah. Toy Box, and I'd, I'd hear his name and I always love the three names because I'm like they're all the, always the craziest ones. Yes, and but. Apparently, I, and that's why I'm like, because it seems like it almost seems dumb if you're you can't be co- considered a serial killer if you don't have if you haven't killed. I mean, you've killed people, but yeah. Apparently, there's there's this thing where there are lots of conspiracies about this whole case. So many people about saying so many people helped him out that there were a lot of people involved, and it was like super sus, like police officers helping. People and in the that's community helping, probably, and it was like this whole like in MK Ultra sit- situation, like you know, they probably where they like made mind, him have a heart attack, mind control, all this stuff. Yeah, go if y'all want to know more about it, you go look because there's all this weird stuff. Maybe that's why it wasn't such a big deal because like they were all in on it because they're doing all this like slave trade, like Jeffrey Epstein type of situation, like wow. slave trading, like trading all these. <sighs> They wanted breath. these Skid Row people to come into town. Yeah, that's why they built that reservoir. <laughs> uh, I wonder if the people who are in on it actually made him have that heart attack because he was going to keep talking. Oh, kind of like Jeffrey Epstein. Yes. Well, that was a mouthful. I and know. We're just I tried s- to go real fast, and I think we did it good. We oh, got yeah, under good an time. hour. Yes. So no complaints. So that's sliding us right into next month. Yep. Serial killers all month. We're doing B team serial killers, by the way. Yeah. So that means maybe you haven't heard of them. Yeah. Brand new. Not the originals. They're, we'll do those eventually. They're like JV. J- they're, they're just as bad, but they're maybe not as well known. Yes. Yes. I was never there, so I don't know what that means. <laughs> she was never JV. Mm-hmm. Nope. Anyway, so look forward to that. Is there anything else? No, we just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for listening. We appreciate everybody. We love it. This is awesome. And keep listening and keep, um, you Always. know, tell your friends about it. Tell your friends about us and share share episodes. Yes. Because that's great. And I am, well, we are working on some merch i'm so close i've got i'm so close so close look forward look forward to that so you have things to look forward to i'm trying to get some hoodies for us before hoodie season i know is over. i know i know <laughs> i'm gonna do it i'm gonna do it I'm all right it. um so rate review to. subscribe yeah and um email us if you have any crazy stories don't forget to stay aware stay alive and always be dts Bye, y'all. Down to fine. Bye. This has been a Rogue Media Podcast. Frozen, Frozen, heroes, gonna tell you about Frozen, Frozen, heroes, gonna tell you about. Hey, I'm Zach. And I'm Mike. And we have a fantastic new podcast to tell you about, Bros, Foes, and Heroes. It's the two of us looking into the world of comics, breaking down some characters that you may have never heard of, and some that are just absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, so Zach comes up with a character each time, and uh, I go into it just completely blind. I don't know who this person is or what their abilities are or anything, and and basically I guess we kind of go over their origin story. 
and just some of the ridiculous stuff that maybe especially golden age stuff. Oh, golden yeah. age stuff is always the best, and we will make sure to highlight all of the shenanigans and just absolute weirdness yeah. of everything. Yeah, that's right. So subscribe today and uh, follow us on Instagram at Bros Bros Heroes. And if you don't, I know where you live. Not really, but please subscribe. <laughs> Frozen, Frozen, Heroes, gonna tell you about Frozen, Frozen, Heroes, gonna tell you about... Hi, I'm Hank. You might remember me from a show called King of the Hill. Check out Ma, a King of the Hill rewatch podcast. These boys ain't right, but they are funny. Find the Ma podcast anywhere you get your podcasts or at roguemedianetwork.com. I tell you what. <laughs> hmm.